People are out of work. They're hurting. They need our help. And I want a jobs bill on my desk without delay. Obama did get a jobs bill on his desk in March. It was called the Hire Act, and it gave tax incentives to employers who hired previously unemployed people. But overall, it didn't really give too much of a boost. And we're on track to add another one and a half million jobs to this total by the end of the year. Actually, the economy only created 1.1 million jobs in 2010, which is nice, but not enough. There were still a lot of people hurting, and unemployment rate remained very high. What I think a lot of people miss is that there have been a lot of job creation policies, and a lot of them have worked to some extent. There's this idea that he wasn't focusing on jobs and that there, there was some other thing we could have done. But in fact, uh, the administration did put forth a lot of policies that did work. We will double our exports over the next five years, an increase that will support two million jobs in America. The nation's actually on track to do this. Uh, the exports rose by about uh, nearly 20 percent uh, last year, so that's a good thing. The administration helped that along by uh, nearly doubling the amount of money uh, it gives uh, to assist U.S. exporters. But keep in mind there's a long way to go. The nation ran a trade deficit last year of over $350 billion, so there's, uh, there's still some work to do here. To help working families, we'll extend our middle class tax cuts. But at a time of record deficits, we will not continue tax cuts for oil companies, for investment fund managers, and for those making over $250,000 a year. We just can't afford it. He did get part of his promise. He did extend the tax cuts temporarily for the middle class for two years. But in exchange for that, he then had to extend them for the upper income folks as well, also for two years. The, the tax cut deal in the end uh, did provide a, a sort of stimulus that the White House had been calling for. So in that sense, it, it was kind of a twofer for him. He got to extend the tax cuts for the middle class, and he got to satisfy w what economists were worried about, which is that we don't want to undermine the economic recovery by raising taxes. Also, the tax compromise in December included a payroll tax cut of two percentage points, so people will have more money in their pockets. Some experts think that they'll be spending that money, and companies will have to hire more to meet that increased demand. Starting in 2011, we are prepared to freeze government spending for three years. Well, that's what he promised, um, and he followed through on the promise in that he put the proposal in his 2011 budget, which he then submitted to Congress, but it really went nowhere because Congress never actually created a 2011 budget. What they did instead was pass a stopgap measure to freeze spending at 2010 levels. I, I should say the freeze that uh, President Obama called for was on only about 13 percent of the federal budget. Someone d described it as emptying the sea with a teaspoon. Like any cash-strapped family, we will work within a budget to invest in what we need and sacrifice what we don't. I mean, it was crazy. We didn't even pass a budget last year. He comes out in February with his 2012 budget proposal. No one's quite sure what's going to be in it. It could be more stringent than his 2011 three-year freeze. Uh, there's been a lot more discussion of the deficit in the past year, so he's under pressure to do something. This is not that complicated, right? Every budget expert we talk to says you need to have a credible plan for long-term debt, but you can't stop spending in the short term. Even the most the fiercest deficit hawks we know who are sensible about this stuff will tell you that you shouldn't do a dramatic draconian spending cuts in the near term.